Univerzo v Ljubljani pod svojim ukriljem razvija vsa znanja, ki jih naša družba potrebuje za doseganje teh ciljev, torej za prehod v novo in brez oglično družbo, ki temeli na krožnem gospodarstvu. V sodelovanju s programi, ki jih omogoča EIT Raw Materials Academy, je naše znanje lahko še boljše in dosega še večje učinke. Zato upamo, da se vam bo na današnjem dogodku odprla kakšno novo obzorje, da se boste uspeli vzpostaviti nove povezave, ki naj imajo v prehodnosti pozitivne učinke, tako na vaš strokovni in poslovni razvoj, kot tudi na vašo širšo in bližno okolico. Zato vam pri delu in današnji srečeni želim veliko uspeha, tudi zabave, zanimivih komentarjev in vas pozdravljam s srečno. Najlepša hvala, dekan, za tale prijeten nagovor. Jaz bi pa kar nadaljevala še z pozdravom tudi strani ekipe regionalnega centra Adrija, katerega so ustanovitelj je tudi Geološki zavod Slovenije. Naj čisto nakratko predstavim tudi Geološki zavod, ki je multidisciplinarni javni raziskovalni zavod, deluje na različnih področjih geoznanosti in izvaja svoje dejavnosti nekje v prepletu temeljnega raziskovanja, aplikativnega delovanja na domačih in tujih trgih in pa javne službe v podporo delovanju Republike Slovenije in pa Evropske unije. Osnovno poslanstvo Geološkega zavoda je zagotoviti čim boljše poznavanje geološke zgradbe v zemljah Republike Slovenije, saj so ti podatki osnova pri reševanju nacionalnih izzivov, tako na področju varovanja okolja in zdravja, kot tudi preskrbe z pitno vodo, zaščite pred naravnimi nesrečami, urbanističnim načrtovanjem, odkrivanjem in oceno rezerov in pa načrtovanja izkoriščanja na hajališč mineralnih surovin. Geološki zavod svoje poslanstvo razničuje tudi na področju preskrbe z energenti v podporo zagotavljanja energetske učinkovitosti. Zavod se vključuje v domačo in mednarodno znanstveno raziskovalno dejavnost in se povezuje s srodnimi organizacijami, tako doma kot po svetu. Tako je med drugim tudi polnopravni član skupnosti znanja in inovacij, tako imenovanega KIKA ali Knowledge Innovation Centra EIT Raw Materials katerega del aktivnosti bo predstavljen danes. Skupaj z Zavodom za gradbeništvo Slovenije in Rodarsko geološko naftno fakulteto Univerza v Zagrebu smo so ustanovitelj regionalnega centra Adrija, etero materials središča za podporo razvoju in inovacija na področju mineralnih surovin v Jedranski regiji. Fokus delovanja tega središča je na Sloveniji in Hrvaški, postopnim povečevanjem prisotnosti v ostalih državah jugovhodne Evrope. Silne skupine, ki jih želimo pritegniti v aktivnosti EITRO Materials, so študenti, vse študenti, vse izobraževalni in raziskovalno osebje na univerzah in pa tudi podjetja. Naše glavne aktivnosti pa so povezovanje lokalnih omreži deležnikov surovin z EITRO Materials v tako imenovan trikotnik znanja, Informiranje o EITRO materijals projektih, možnostih financiranja, priložnostih za sodelovanje, spodbujamo mreženje, zbiramo projektne ideje in prispevamo k njihovemu razvoju in izvajanju. Nudimo tudi pomoč potencijalnim novim partnerjem pri sodelovanju skupnostjo EITRO materijals in vključitvivanju. In iščemo komplementarne vire financiranja za naše projekte. Z današnjim spoznavnim dogodkom Želimo tudi vas seznaniti z nekaterimi aktivnostmi EITRO Materials, ki so za vas zanimive, z prednostmi, ki jih te aktivnosti doprinašajo in vas želimo pritegniti, povabiti v stacesnejše sodelovanje. Danes sta tukaj zmano še dve članici ekipe regionalnega centra Adrija in sicer gospa Urša Šolc z Geološkega zavoda Slovenije, ki bo današnji dogodek povezovala, in dr. Mateja Košir z Zavodo za gradbeništvo. Poleg vseh govorcev, ki sledijo, vam bosta tudi Mateja in Urša kasneje na voljo za vaše vprašanje. Zdaj pa bi s programom kar nadaljevali in vabim k besedi gospod Inobenda, 
ki je vodja regionalne inovacijske scheme ATA Raw Materials, da nam predstavi ATA Raw Materials in priložnosti v tako imenovani regionalni inovacijski schemi ATA. Tina, izvoli. Dobar dan, lepo pozdravljeni. Lepo bi samo prosila, če mi omogočite delenje zaslona, ker ni mogoče dokler tako sve pa pošlo. Hvala. Evo, samo trenutek. Tako, ne? Tako. Vidite moja predstavitev v redu? Tako je. Super, hvala. Lepo pozdravljeni vsi, moja ime je Tina Benda, sem geologinja, nekdanja študentka na Ravoslovno tehniške fakultete v Ljubljani. Delam pa kot RIS manager oziroma vodja regionalne inovacijske scheme na EIT Raw Materials. To je inštitut, ki vam ga bom danes bolj podrobno predstavila, predvsem pa možnosti znotraj tako imenovane regionalne inovacijske scheme, ki jih ta inštitut EIT omogoča za države, ki so upravičene do teh sredstev. Torej, kaj EIT sploh je? Evropska unija oziroma Evropska komisija financira različne skupnosti znanja in inovacij, ki tvorijo EIT skupnost. In te skupnosti znanja in inovacij združujo veliko partnerjev, ki izhajajo iz različnih področji. EIT Raw Materials je seda področje mineralnih surovin. Vse te skupnosti znanja in inovacij, tudi EIT Raw Materials, se delno financirajo iz programa Horizon 2020 oziroma v prihodne pod programom Horizon Europe. Kaj je namen EIT-ja, torej Inštituta za inovacije in tehnologijo in tehnologijo, S tem seveda tudi namen vseh kikov skupnosti znanja in inovacij in tudi kika EIT Raw Materials, kar poskušajo uvaljaviti trikotnik znanja, ki ga je že Meta omenila, povezovati raziskovalne inštitucije, izobraževalne ustanove in pa na drugi strani industrijo oziroma podjetja, da združijo svoje znanje in sodelovanje in povečajo nivo inovacij na posameznem področju. In EIT, in z njim tudi EIT Raw Materials, financira aktivnosti, s pomočjo katerih lahko študentje postanejo podjetniki, se pravi, da se jim pomaga razmišljati bolj podjetniško, da se ideje in pa tehnologije, ki so trenutno v razvoju v laboratorijih, prenese do kupca, se pravi, da se jih razvije iz tistega nivoja, recimo, ki se mu reče TRL, Technology Readiness Level, ki je v laboratorijskem okolju preverjeno do takega nivoja, ko je primerno za prihod na trg. Se pravi, je v velikem delu tudi financer projektov EIT Raw Materials. Tako, Raw Materials, nakratko si bom vseeno vzela eno minuto, zato mineralne surovine v našem vsakdanjem življenju so zelo pomembne, čeprav velikemu delu javnosti to še ni znano in tudi k temu stremimo, da bi se čim več ljudi zavedalo, kje vse rabijo mineralne surovine in zakaj je celotna industrija, ki jih proizvaja, tako zelo pomembna. Če ne bi imeli mineralnih surovin, rodarjenja in vse industrije, bi v bistvu v vaših življenjih, v naših življenjih uporabljali zgolj lesene izdelke in pa hrano. Se pravi, vse, kar ni zraslo oziroma bilo vzgojeno, je bilo nekoč pridobljeno z rodarjenjem in tukaj na slikah je to dobro vidno, se pravi, ne bi imeli hiš, avtomobilov, telefonov, računalnikov in tako naprej. Evropska unija in industrija Evrope večino teh mineralnih surovin uvozi iz držav, kjer so pogoji za delavce, bom rekla, nenodzorovani, seveda slabši tehnologije, niso okoljsko ozaveščene in glede na to, da Evropa želi biti vodilna v svetu, da postane oglično neutralna, si želimo to industrijo pripeljati v Evropo. Evropa ima mineralne surovine, kot lahko vidite na zemljevidu, ima tudi predvsej 
Rudnikov seveda dobri primeri so v državah, kjer je gostota prebivalstva manjša, kjer so te projekti lažje sprejeti in vidijo rodarjenje kot pač del njihovih življen, z službo in tako dalje. Naš namen pa je seveda tudi z zelenimi tehnologijami, z dobrimi pogoji za delavce, rodarstvo približati širši javnosti in vso industrijo povezano z njo in obzavedanju tega, da pač to potrebujemo, če želimo ohranjati naš nivo komforta v vsakdanjih življenjih. In skupno znanje in inovacij EIT Raw Materials dela prav to. V celi vrednostni verigi mineralnih surovin poskuša pomagati, spodbujati v bistvu izdelavo inovativnih produktov in storitev, spreminjati proizvodne procese, spodbujati partnerstva, ki bi prinesla večje inovacije na vseh tako imenovanih členih krožne verige mineralnih surovin, od raziskovanja do rodarjenja, tukaj recimo zraven pa še tudi pametni rudniki, se pravi tehnologije za pametne rudnike, Zelo pomembno je oblikovanje produktov, ker na tem temelji velik del zmožnosti recikliranja surovin in tako dalje. In EIT Raw Materials ima tri glavne cilje. Zagotovitev oskrbe z mineralnimi surovinami za Evropo, oblikovanje rešitev za inovacije pri proizvodni materijalov, izdelkov in pa v procesih in pa spodbuditi korenit premik od linearnega krožnemu gospodarstvu na področju mineralnih surovin. Kot sem omenila, to so vsa področja, s katerimi se naši partneri ukvarjajo in res pokrivamo celotno verigo mineralnih surovin. Kot naravoslovci veste, da je bazno znanje lahko aplicirano na mnogo katera področja in prav tako je tudi tukaj. Smo največja skupnost vsega, Na svetu na področju mineralnih surovin združujemo več kot 300 partnerjev, ki sodelujejo v aktivnostih in v projektih. Naši partnerji prihajajo iz 27 in še več evropskih držav in do leta 2018 smo financirali več kot 300 projektov z budžetom več kot 130 milijonov evrov in zagotovili šesto novih služb na področju mineralnih surovin. Naši centri so razdeljeni oziroma po Evropi. Tam v bistvu služijo temu, da smo bližje partnerjem, da nas lažje kontaktirajo in vsak posamezen centar bolje razume, bom rekla, ne probleme, ampak recimo temu specifike regije in jih lažje obravnava. Zdaj pa k ključnemu pojmu današnje moje predstavitve, regionalna inovacijska schema ali RIS, kaj to je? Namenjena je državam, ki so pod inovacijskim povprečjem Evrope. Evropska komisija vsako leto izračuna tako imenovani Innovation Scoreboard in države, ki jih vidite na zemljevidu v romeni in oranžni barvi, so pod povprečjem inovativnosti na evropskem nivoju. In namen regionalne inovacijske sheme, ki prinaša dodatna sredstva financiranja za države, ki spadajo po to schemo, torej romene in oranžne, da se zmanjšajo razlike v inovativnosti med evropskimi državami, da se poveča zmožnost inovativnosti v teh državah in seveda to potem privede tudi do povečanja števila partnerjev, do novih inovacij in novih sodelovanj. Kaj nudi EIT Raw Materials? Organiziramo dogodke, ki omogočajo omreženje med partnerji in seveda potem tudi snovanje in razvijanje idej, kot so Raw Materials Summit, Brokerage dogodek, imamo tudi skupnost alumnijev, o kateri boste več slišali kasneje, financiramo programe za spodbujanje start-upov, 
oziroma za omogočanje njihovega razvoja, pa tudi za mala in srednja podjetja. Velik del pa je financiranje tako imenovanih upscaling, inovacijskih projektov, ki so namenjeni dvigu nivoja njihove pripravljenosti iz trla 5, vse do trla 10, torej, da so nekako se premosti to razliko, ko je produkt v laboratoriju in med pač tisto pripravljenosti, ko se ga lahko ponudi kupcem na trgu in ta vmesni del financira EIT Raw Materials. Ponujamo tudi izobraževalne programe za vse življensko učenje in pa tudi magisterske, polne magisterske programe in en doktorski, v katerim vam bo kasneje več povedal moj sodelavec Imre. Za konec, še nakratko, nekaj projektov bi predstavila, da si lažje vi predstavljate, kaj vse počnemo, kaj vse podpiramo. Trenutno na izobraževalnem področju je velik projekt namenjen univerzam oziroma visokošolskim inštitucijam in sicer HE Innovate Self-Assessment Tool, to je pa orodje za samo oceno univerz, kakšen je njihov inovacijski potencijal. To spravi, da univerze same ugotovijo, kakšen je potencijal, kako v bistvu se uvršajo v lokalni ekosistem ali imajo primerne študijske programe in Ta to orodje trenutno že preizkušajo univerze v Beogradu, v Sarajevo in v Zenici. Eden od projektov je tudi ENGI. Ta projekt spodbuja dekleta, da študirajo geoznanosti in inženirske študije. Zelo ljub projekt, mislim, da vsem ženskim kolegicam. Kot sem rekla, financiramo pa tudi start-upe. Tole je eden od start-upov mladih švedskih fantov. Zagotavlja pa sledene ljudem in opremi v rudniku. Kot veste, Wi-Fi pod zemljo ne deluje. Oni pa so iznašli točno to. Sistem pozicionirana, zasnovan posebej za okolja podzemnih predorov, ki v realnem času lahko pošilja zelo natančne podatke o lokacijah, celo na nekaj metrov natančno lahko določijo, kje se v rudniku nahaja tudi določena oseba ali pa recimo vozilo. Zakaj je to pomembno? Poleg drugih faktorjev, ki recimo v nesrečah, tudi kadar pred eksplozijami delavci dobijo obvestilo lahko na svoj mobilni telefon, da se omaknejo v zaklonišče, vidijo, da so delavci na varnem oprema na varnem, tako vsi procesi v rudniku lahko potekajo veliko hitreje in varneje. Vem, da je bilo informacij veliko. Tema je seveda obširna, obsega vse dele naše družbe. Želela sem vam prikazati, kako lahko vse sodelujete v naši skupnosti partnerjev. Če imate kakršno koli vprašanja, lahko kadarkoli pišete na e-mail naslov, poiščete pa lahko tudi imel naslov na naši skletni strani in poprašate, karkoli vas zanima tam. Tako študenti za študijske programe in raziskovalci za projekte oziroma ostale aktivnosti. Hvala. Tina, najlepša hvala za tvojo izčrpno predstavitev. Hkrati zelo informativno Pa mislim, da tvoj mail naslov si kar velja zapolniti. Zdaj bi pa povabila k predavanju kolega Imreta Gomkoto, vodjo izobraževalnih programov EIT Raw Materials Innovation Hub-a CLC Vzhod, ki bo nadaljeval svojo predstavitev v angliškem jeziku. Imre, the floor is yours. Do we have you in our company? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Hello. everyone. Uh, if you let me share my screen, then I can of course. share my, my presentation as well. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, probably see. So yeah, good afternoon uh, for for everyone, and then more, uh, especially for the for the students on behalf of EIT Bromatheos. I'm Imre Gomkete, as it was mentioned, an education manager uh, uh, of the Eastern CLC of EIT Bromatheos. I would like to sh give you a short introduction of uh, the so-called labeled programs, uh, labeled master programs we had within EIT Bromatheos, and then explain a bit what is what is those labeled programs stand for, and then. Uh, this will be a, a, a practical presentation to you to gain some information, maybe a bit boring, but I'm sure that Ali, just after me, will uh, provide you the more more fun part and then the more exciting part is a you know, student perspective as well and then introducing the alumni and then how, how fun is it and how uh, important uh, is it uh, within our portfolio. But please also the, the researchers with us, uh, please keep uh, also your attention because then some some of the aspects of these presentations could be interested to you uh, the methodology how we structure label programs and also if you would like to somehow uh, uh, promote your students that you supervise the label uh, label program so then if you would like to, to to make them grow in a way that that would be super super useful for them and then uh, it's important also for us so Tina introduced already um, uh, EIT Robotics itself and then what is it and what, uh, what, what we are aiming for. So um, I, I, I actually can skip that part and just, just focusing on the education part and then what EIT Robotics is doing as education activities is basically, uh, let's say, uh, the so-called wider society learning. So we're really trying to, to raise awareness of, of the importance of robotics in a wider and a broader sense uh, within the society and also attract young people into, into, into the sector and into these uh, uh, activities that the extraction and then using of raw materials and recycling is, is required. And then we are dealing with a lot of uh, uh, activities with higher education and master programs and PhD programs. And of course, uh, uh, the professional training and learning is also within our scope so that uh, professionals that are already uh, working on the field, but we know that uh, the pace of change uh, by the emerging technologies and then by the changing of the society and then the awareness of, of different things that, that, that people have, the changing how we think, think so that, that, that's a really fast pacing, changing, let's say, professional environment and just to be able to keep pace. This professional training is very important. Uh, there is one quality label actually that um, it's not EIT raw materials, but EIT uh, grants to, to those master and PhD programs that fulfill some certain uh, criteria. And then the, one of the most important criteria uh, is that there's one technical uh, uh, aspect that you have to learn, for example, as an engineer, and then you could be like, let's say a mining engineer or a mineral process engineer like myself. But on top of that, you are learning a lot about innovation and entrepreneurship. So how, how innovation works, uh, what, what are the processes there and how to be an entrepreneur. And it's not only knowledge, but some skills also. So uh, all of the labeled programs actually are containing these components embedded into the training so that you go through this normal, let's say, uh, engineering education or, 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 or being a scientist, the scientific education, but also you're gaining this, this strong entrepreneurship uh, uh, <clears throat> mindset during uh, the course. What's very important in all these courses are strongly tied to industry. So uh, throughout the four semesters, for example, in the case of master programs, you are contacted uh, actively and then also is expected to you do it proactively with different industries to, to work on research projects with, with the industry, work on your thesis uh, that's provided by the industry and then it's important, the topic itself, uh, the challenge itself to the industry. Uh, and then you, you may attend in internships uh, within the industry. So to so learning by doing uh, what's going on within that particular uh, uh, company, within that particular sector throughout the, uh, the four years. Uh, and that, that's very important as well. And then one more aspect, of course, uh, you are selecting one very specific, you know, branch of your learning. So you may become a material scientist or a material engineer or a process engineer or a mining engineer, but regardless, you are learning and then got an overview of the whole raw material value chain. So uh, even if you become a, a mining engineer, you learn about how you know exploration techniques and how exploration looks like. Mining, of course, in more detail, 
and then the uh, the more the downstream, so so processing, metallurgy, how manufacturing and recycling work. So just to have have an overview because that helps you better understand the techniques you use and then the uh, the steps that's necessary to process and use those materials in the, in, the, in the further steps. So that we call the T-shaped uh, professional uh, uh, altogether. So these are the very characteristics, and then if the program fulfills these characteristics, it can apply to get this quality label we call EIT label, and it's actually EIT, the European Innovation and Technology, uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology actually grants this. Um, <clears throat> within EIT raw materials, we have six, uh, let's say seven master programs now uh, already that qualifies for this label program, and then these are programs that run by our partner universities, but on top of that, there are different activities that we are providing to students and lecturers, researchers uh, uh, on top and then in addition to those programs, including, uh, let's say, one, one, some examples that the label startup says that uh, the students from label programs can meet with, with actual startups that just, you know, started their company that's uh, uh, bringing some, some new products on the market. And then that's, uh, let's say, it's a first-hand experience that you can learn also about about uh, uh, entrepreneurship. And then it's a new addition that's uh, EIT, EIT chapter in, in your thesis. That's, uh, that's really uh, when you're working on your engineering thesis work, but then you have to include how this is relevant in the, in the business perspective. Uh, that, that's something that also some mentors and your advisors and supervisors can work with you through. Uh, and then also that's, that's a very interesting, uh, let's say, aspect and part of this work. Uh, all of our, our master programs actually that um, uh, you can find at our, our, our website. So there is one landing page that you can browse to and then also you can gain some information. So, so about the programs, where is it, which university is involved, what are the topics there, how can you get in, what kind of scholarships are available, uh, if there's any. Uh, of course, uh, there are scholarships available. Uh, and then, and a lot of, lot of other things, uh, and then even you can contact, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh -huh. apparently something happened. Imre? Do you hear us? Gato di ostali ne slišete? O ne slišmo. Ne slišmo. Ne ne sliši se ga zgleda ko da da je pre. Um potem pa počakamo mogoče kakšno minuto da se nam priključi nazaj. Uh, hotela sem vam pa napisati v pogovor oziroma v chat sekcijo, da če se vam pojavi kakšno vprašanje že med samimi predstavitvami, ste toplo vabljeni, da jih kar zapišete uh, in delite z nami, uh, drugače bomo pa imeli malo kasneje na voljo nekaj časa za vprašanje in odgovore. Uh, jaz bi predlagala, da mogoče počakamo kakšno minuto, če se nam uh, Imre pridruži, uspe pridružiti nazaj, glede na to, da je imel predstavitev že pravzaprav nekje na polovici. Uh -huh. Je že nazaj. Imre, do we hear you? We see you? Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry. Uh... Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I, I dropped out uh, in okay. the middle of the middle of so, Please yeah. continue. Let me let me share again and then continue. So yeah, let me go through again uh some of these master programs. So let's start with the Amir. I don't have much time to go into details, but what is need to know about this program is basically uh a, a material science program. So about it, it's about advanced materials engineering, but in a in a in a in a recycling perspective. So what you're learning is, is uh, material science and materials engineering, but in a very high level of, of, of recycling knowledge on, on the different uh, material streams that could be 
uh, relevant. Uh, and then if, if you see this chart, that actually you have the opportunity to start uh, with two different universities uh, in, in Bordeaux or in Lisbon, and then based on your decision, what kind of materials uh, streams you would like to, to deal with in more detail uh, in a research, uh, recycling perspective, then you can end up in Darmstadt, Liège, Madrid, Mish calls, uh, uh, depending on, on which branch of the matrix you are, you are, uh, actually, uh, go for. Uh, it, well, uh, in details, all of the programs actually full master programs, meaning it's, it's, it's four semesters. Uh, all of the programs actually, it's in English. And then all of the programs uh, starting in September. So I'm not going to repeat it once more. Uh, it will be on the slides, but I'm not going to tell you. And then what is necessary for each of them as a minimum requirement that you have to, you know, it's all of them is in English. So you have to have a, 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 a well, a fluid English, uh, uh, at least uh, some, some proficiency to, to understand uh, what's, what's going on and then to learn and you'll be able to communicate, but also a bachelor degree either in, in engineering or in environmental sciences or, or some, some, some natural sciences definitely uh, that could connect to the raw material sector. So I'm not, again, I'm going to repeat uh, for, for all of them. Uh, in, in terms of tuition fees, uh, all of the program actually has tuition fees in, in different levels. Uh, for Amir, actually, if you are coming from Europe, and then that is a, probably in, uh, you, in the case in, in your side, so that you are European students and you're coming from the European Union, then actually this is 2,000 euros a year. So for two semesters in, in, this, in this, this program. But then you are entitled for the so-called ASVA scholarship that we granting for all their all the students that actually applying and getting enrolled in in a in a label program. So that's I mean you can also use this to cover your tuition. Another one is the uh, the so-called AMIS program is a master in advanced materials for innovation and sustainability, and this is as well a material science materials engineering related course, but it's more focusing on on, on, on substituting different materials like critical materials or toxic materials in applications. So it, it's really a material science uh, uh, related program. So if you're interested to this, then this program uh, is to you. And then uh, if you if you see this, this track so that you can start uh, three different tracks, depending on your you know choosing one, you can start at the Grenoble France or Alto uh, Finland or in Darmstadt Germany. And then, depending on on which track you are following, then you can end up in a different universities throughout the the four semester. Uh, <clears throat> what is important again? So this is also a, a joint degree. So that that this is this you, program is also provides you a, a multiple degree. Let's say so, uh, as many universities take you know you take part during your your education that uh, you got the diploma from that university as well. Uh, for EU students, the, uh, uh, the tuition fee uh, was 1,000 euro a year in, in, in last year, actually. But all, and then, yeah, these, these, these tuition fees can change from time to time. So that's, that's the best to check the website of the programs. Actually, uh, is indicated all these slides. Uh, uh, and then you can also available through the landing page. Uh, <clears throat> that what is the most, uh, uh, let's say, updated information of tuition fees, but yeah, it's 1,000 uh, euro a year. And then the application period is usually between October, January, and February, April, depending on if you are coming from Europe or not. So uh, if you maybe think of, you know, applying to this program, then it's, uh, uh, I think it's high time to check their website as well, and then how to apply through this website, and then what's, what's the criteria to, to apply. So that's that's uh, uh, an important information so as you see this is the third one so the european mining course uh, uh the emc and then in the slide actually you can see the website so then if you go if you would like to go directly to the website uh, this is the link that uh just right uh, near near the uh, eu logo so you can follow this this program actually is quite a mining related program so emc is a mining program it's, uh, the main course is mining so if you really would like to learn about uh, yeah, being a mining engineer and then also learn on top of the business economics, ethics, uh, how environmental engineering and then um, mining related and env environmental engineering and health and safety, all this stuff, then this program uh, is for you. 
many universities, uh, Alto University from Finland, RWTH and from Germany and that University uh, of Technology uh, from, from the Netherlands are uh, in this program. So there is only one track that you can follow through. So there is no that sh uh, such a diversity of tracks here, but that's a still a very interesting and a very uh, let's say uh, attracting attracting track in terms of also locality and then they are also a very um, top notch universities in a way uh, so if you want to learn mining that that's for you uh, <clears throat> needs to mention that uh, the tuition fees for for EU students is is approximately 2000 euros a year so that's uh, significant of course yes and uh, the application period is is uh, from uh, October to to April. So if you are interested, you have you sometimes. But I think it's also worth to have have the uh, worth to have you know check check the website if there's any information available already on 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 the application. And then such as in every program in this program is also this Alva Alva grant is is available. I'm mentioning this ex exactly because in some programs Erasmus Mundus uh, scholarships are also available. So when you see this Erasmus Mundus uh, scholarship is also available, then uh, uh, usually that comes with a, a, a higher level of, of fund, uh, let's say grants. So the Erasmus grants are a bit higher. So, uh, but of course there are competition for those grants. But if you think that you are qualified for that, then then you can also apply in some programs also for uh, this Erasmus Mundus uh, uh, scholarship. Emerald program, uh, Master in Re Resources Engineering. So uh, this program actually is really, really process orientated. So what you, if, if you're looking for a program and a strong program on, on, on processing, metallurgy, connected to recycling, that, that as well that this program is actually to you. And then how the track map looks like and then how you can go through your 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 different semesters is like you start in the University of Liège in Belgium and then continue University of Lorraine, uh, which is in France, and then depending on your choice, you can continue uh, uh, in Luleå uh, Institute of Technology or or Freiburg uh, Berger Academy in Germany, and then for the fourth semester you can go back any of these universities to to finish uh, the internship and your thesis work. Uh, well, the tuition fees are pretty high here. So uh, EU students uh, in, in 2019, it was uh, 4,500 euros. And the application period depends on where are you coming from and then which uh, uh, scholarship you are, uh, uh, yeah, you, you're going for. Uh, because in this program, actually, Erasmus Mundus scholarship is also available. So uh, this is the high time uh, if you would like to, to apply and then go for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship. As I said, it's usually higher than the EIT Romatius ASVA, ASVA, ASVA scholarships. And then uh, in March, April, there are uh, applications for the non-EU self-funded students. And then in between March and June for EU self-funded students. So if you decide, okay, well, you are interested about this program, but you don't go for any scholarships and then you can pay it for yourself, then that time of the year you can check in and apply. So that I think it's important. Well, the following one is called the Syndrome Master in Sustainable and Innovative uh, Resource Management, which basically a very broad program gaining a broad view of the entire uh, natural resource value chain. So if you go into this program that you will gain information to the whole resource value chain of, of, of the natural resources. And then also there is a track now that was introduced uh, uh, recently that you can learn very strong entrepreneurship about entrepreneurship as a separate track so that you can be specialized on entrepreneurship as well uh, uh, within, this, within this program. And then uh, depending on your choice, you are starting your studies in Ghent University and then continues in Uppsala. And then in the year two, you can go either uh, 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 all of the three universities to, to Ghent, Uppsala or, or Freiburg in, in Germany to finish your thesis, to go for an internship uh, and uh, finish your, 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 your study. 
In terms of the tuition fees, um, uh, for European students, uh, this is a 6,000 euros uh, 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 per year uh, program. So it's, it's, again, it's very significant. And uh, application period is, is basically now, so it's usually open until end of May. Um, but if you are a non-European student, and then maybe there are some of you I, I don't know, then uh, the deadline is end of February, February actually, so it's, uh, it's shorter. And then within this program as well, ASVA and Erasmus Mundus scholarships are also uh, available. Well, uh, SUMA, uh, Master in Sustainable Materials, is about, yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's an education program that's about mater uh, material engineering again, uh, and, and on the sake of uh, sustainability. So that's a, a material engineering program focusing on, on sustainability. So that's uh, also a, a bit broader broader program in, in a sense, but it's a strong focus on material and <coughs> engineering. Uh, uh, KU Leuven, uh, University of Trento in Italy, uh, University of Milano Bicocca, uh, and Montan University Leoben uh, are, are the universities where you actually can start your, your study. And then depending on your choice, you can continue four different tracks uh, 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 throughout the four semesters. All this information actually, and then in a bit more detail, is available, as I said, in our website. And then even a, a downloadable brochure is a PDF format, so you can you can access this information very quickly, and then you can check the details there as well uh, if you're interested uh, about uh, the program. So, as I said, um, this is a, a program that provides multiple degrees uh, at the end, depends uh, on your uh, choice. And basically, the, the tuition fees are varying based on the program track and the country of origin, where are you from. And then, uh, uh, well, I, I must say that the tuition fees, depending where you are coming from, uh, and the range is between, uh, let's say, almost 80 euros to, to 5,500. So that basically depends on the region and, and the economic uh, situation in the region where are you uh, originated from. So that, that's... Uh, uh, there is a calculator in the website, and then you can gain information. What what is the level of tuition fee is exactly applying to you? Uh, you can apply to this program directly through the website, and then this is the only way. So it's a multiple step application, and then the first step is that you have to register at their website. So if you're interested in this program, definitely you would like to register at master uh, summa .eu website and then see and then follow the steps, uh, what is recommended there and upload the, the documents. And then ASVA scholarship again is available here. And then uh, from this year, actually, we have a new program uh, on, on uh, raw materials exploration and sustainability. This is a, 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 a geology uh, exploration related program with a strong sustainability aspect. And this is, this is basically a new one. The program itself is not new, but it, it gained and it's been upgraded and gained this EIC quality label. Sorry. I just mentioned uh, at the beginning this year. So from now on, this program is as well uh, have this strong entrepreneurial and an industry oriented uh, additions to, to its program. So that's, that's good. So if you're interested more in geology and sustainability, uh, then this RAMES program is maybe to you. Uh, this is, uh, an, uh, uh, let's say, an Italian-led program, and then uh, it provides a double degree between University of Bologna and uh, uh, a technical university in Trondheim, Norway. So these are the other uh, two universities. And uh, uh, the tuition fees is also calculated based on, on uh, uh, let's say, uh, an Italian system. So based on where are you originating from and what are the, let's say, the regular income levels of the region where you live, then you have to actually translate this information to an Italian system. There is a guideline at the website again, and then it, it, it can be decided which level of your tuition fee that you have to have to pay. But the, the highest level is this around this 4,000 euros a year. So that's the, uh, uh, the highest, uh, highest level. I assume that uh, I mean, uh, students coming from, from, from all over Eastern Europe, this, this, this tuition fee must be much lower than the highest level uh, necessary here. Application period for EU students is, is between May and November. Um, so that will be open, uh, well, let's say uh, next May. So that there is still time to decide if, if, if this is something that you would like to go for. 
So, yeah, I, I, I'm almost end. So I, I, I would like to finish soon, just uh, as a kind of conclusion. So each program has its own entry requirement. Uh, what is similar is the link, the English, right? So you have to have some 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 level of English and a, and a bachelor degree in, in in engineering or or any natural sciences, most of the cases, and then you can apply. And then uh, uh, more the details are available on the web page. And then, uh, yeah. And scholarships are available uh, for in all of the programs. So this ASVA grant is, is definitely available in all of the programs. Uh, but of course, there are other options. So you can be self-paying if you want, uh, or or if you're not eligible for any of the scholarships, or, or you're just not, you know, strong enough for the criteria. But also Erasmus Mundus uh, scholarships are also available in many of these programs. Unfortunately, there are tuition fees uh, within these programs, and then they are varying between eighty to six uh, uh, six thousand, and depending on the program and then uh, which country are you from or which regions are you from. But you can also very quickly check this on their web page again. So basically, that's it. And what's important to know, and I think it also applies to this event as well. So if you are become a, a student of of uh, of any of these labeled programs, then you are eligible to apply to, to become an EIT Raw Materials alumni member, which comes with a lot of benefits uh, because that's a growing num growing network, let's say, that's professional students that taking act part in, in any EIT Raw Materials activity. Uh, well, actually, you are eligible applying, taking part in this event, but, uh, but for about this, I think Ali will uh, provide a bit more in, information to you. So, I mean, that's it from my side. I wanted to, to keep my time because I remember last time I was way, uh, uh, was not able to, to keep my time. So I think if, yeah, I still have, no, actually I'm on time. So, but anyway, if you have any questions, please don't, don't hesitate to ask me even directly or in the chat uh, while the others are having the presentation. So I'm still here. I will have another presentation. So I'm not, running away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Imre, for your really uh, punctual uh, and really informative uh, presentation. Uh, now, now I would like to uh, invite Ali Hassan uh, to share his experience with uh, the EAT Raw Materials Academy labeled program, uh, to be exact, uh, Emerald program and to present uh, some more opportunities uh, to, co uh, to cooperate in the EAT Raw Materials Alumni Association. So Ali, welcome, the floor is yours and uh, please uh, share your presentation. Thank you, thank you Ucha. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the event so far or getting new information uh, well, I am Ali, as uh, you can see, but my, you, you have already heard about the program, some of the programs, label master's programs that are there on offering. Uh, my, my job here now is basically just to present uh, how I carried out my master's and my, what my journey of uh, two years was like. I graduated in August and I was thinking earlier that during those two years, you don't really have enough time to think about what you're going through because you're so in it and it's kind of a roller coaster. But now when I think back, uh, it has been an exceptional journey and I think uh, it should be mentioned uh, in events like these to prospective students so that uh, you can inspire perhaps in the right way. Now, the reason why I say it is because uh, you, you will probably realize it by the end of this presentation. So I will, I will formally start now uh, yeah, I, I come from Pakistan and uh, I am a mining engineer by background. Uh, I worked a little bit and then I uh, decided to take out, take out this Emerald Masters. And because there was this uh, fully funded Erasmus Mundus opportunity, which was very appealing. So I was like, okay, why not? Let's go. So my Emerald experience started in, in Liège, in, at the University of Liège in Belgium. Uh, that's where uh, we all gathered. We were... Uh, a small cohort, not so big, 17, 18 students and uh, from 12 nationalities to begin with. And uh, that, that's how it is for each Emerald uh, cohort. Uh, they all start in, in Liège in Belgium. Now, 
why I say that this is not so fun part because this is the academic part. The academic part is usually there for, for every program. And uh, I mean, it's routine, right? But uh, it's actually quite fun in a way that you move a lot. There is a lot of mobility involved and uh, that's the essence of it. One of the essence of uh, these EIT labeled master's programs or Erasmus Mundus program is their mobility component. After finishing our master, uh, the first semester in Liège, where the focus was more on, on um, trying this multidisciplinary background uh, students with, with, uh, from metallurgy, from geology, from mining, to, to build a strong base so that they can be on the same level. So those who have not taken certain courses before, they're given new ones. Uh, so depending on the background, you choose your uh, course. And by the end of the semesters, everyone is sort of on the same level. And then we all go to Nancy in France, and uh, that's where we, we sort of have all the same courses, but much more advanced in advanced characterization, advanced mineral processing, uh, modeling. So there is a bit, uh, bit not just bit, but uh, there is a lot for everyone, no matter you are a metallurgist, no matter you are a, you are, you are a geologist or geological engineer or a mining engineer, uh, all these components are quite professional and very advanced. Uh, after our two semesters, we go to Freiburg for our summer business school. Now, this is usually held every year for every cohort, and which is a requirement where that component of entrepreneurship, uh, innovation, uh, business management, some of the components involving accounting and economics are also involved. So, so to become like an all-round professional, not just be focused on the core components of the program, but also there is this uh, strong focus on entrepreneurship and innovation and the skills uh, that are required for it. We also get aware of the ecosystem that is currently existing in Europe or in countries where we are based. Uh, how can we utilize it? How can we bring our ideas or uh, uh, to market? And how can we better prepare for, for uh, whatever roles we want to take further? Uh, after our summer school, we kind of split, uh, split in half. Half of us go to Lulio because they focus on primary resources more over there. Uh, and uh, if you want to focus more on recycling and processing of uh, uh, secondary resources, you decide to go to Freiburg in Germany. So this is the whole whole educational component part and uh, the mobility involving involving Emerald Masters. Now there is also another part which is which, which I call it fun part because you're not just taking courses in processing or, or, or you're just taking courses in geology or mo modeling or mining or mineral processing or characterization you actually do quite a bit uh, along with it also when we first started out uh, here in uh, in Belgium we went for a week-long field trip to Greece and Bulgaria where we visited uh, four or five different mines, processing plants. Uh, there were underground mines, open pit mines, surface mines, as you call them, and then uh, different flotation plants to uh, to gravity separation, all kinds of processing plants uh, before the state of metallurgy. Uh, you, here you see some of the pictures uh, from uh, some of those places we have been to. They're not all, they're actually much more. And uh, there is there is an extensive component of these field trips which we consider as very important in emerald program because you learn by seeing and it's not just uh, learning in the classroom but actually going there physically interacting with professionals and learning from them uh, in germany also we had quite a bit this is actually an interesting picture because uh, this is a famous mine uh, reiche Zesche in uh, germany an old silver mine uh, we are performing experiments as part of a course in Freiburg uh, underground. So this was quite cool, actually. Uh, and here you also see it's not all about mines. This is a recycling plant. So like Imre was mentioning, you, you get a whole perspective of the whole value chain of raw materials and you, you get into it. Um, after, after the master ends, you kind of feel, OK, I am not just a mining engineer anymore or, or mineral processing. Uh, as for me, I don't consider myself as a mining engineer or just a mining engineer anymore. It's much broader. I ended up doing my thesis in recycling, uh, bringing all those principles from mineral processing uh, here to recycling as well. So you, you become a broad and, and a diverse professional who has an overview of the whole uh, chain. So you, you can connect things, what happens before, what, what happens after. So um, I think it's a wonderful program. Uh, the label experience, the EIT component, also includes some of the other things apart from these academic courses and uh, 
and field trips and these uh, excursions and business schools. The label also provides uh, this, this focus uh, on, on entrepreneurship. And as part of uh, this, uh, from each program, all, all the six or seven now label programs have a representative and they combine up to, to organize. Uh, uh, the, the picture you see here is from a label startup event, which, was, which I was part of the organizing committee. Uh, here, this was a weekend an entrepreneurship excursion where we invited some of the founders or successfully going uh, startups uh, to to have to have a weekend with them to learn from their experience from their mistakes and their uh, advice and tips uh, to work on some of the challenges and also to network with all other six programs we were uh, almost 65 students gathered here uh, for a weekend and it was uh, not just good exercise but also a lot of fun uh, another important activity that happens every year from the EIT Raw Materials Academy, that is uh, EIT Race. This year it was held online, but I was uh, fortunate enough to participate in, in the physical one last year, uh, where we, we made this journey through the raw materials value chain, starting in Finland, uh, from, from going to mines and and then uh, watching consumption activities or manufacturing at Audi in Germany. We went to Netherlands and here the focus was more on developing ideas and working on entrepreneurship. Uh, there was uh, a strong ecosystem of entrepreneurship at that center. And then we finished off uh, at, a, at a famous, uh, or, or let's say a big recycling player, Umicor in Belgium, where we also uh, pitched our ideas. This was a two week journey, 70 students from almost 30 countries. We visited four countries uh, we visited the, these plants, so there were field trips involved. We worked on our own ideas and tried to, to form uh, them into some sort of a business proposition so they can eventually lead to the uh, EIT Jumpstarter. Uh, I was also part of a team that uh, went to uh, the first stage of EIT Jumpstarter. Unfortunately, we didn't go further. But this is also an opportunity which you get or... or uh, a high chance of being a participant in that if you are a label student, not just Amaral, but any label master's program uh, student. And this is essentially an activity for just master's students. EIT label has also provided us uh, some, some additional benefits uh, along with these uh, really nice and cool fully funded events. Uh, there was this uh, label launch, which was a graduation ceremony Unfortunately, it was online, but still it was quite cool as there were companies. This was more of a job fair supported by the EIT Raw Materials Academy for its label students, uh, trying to bring in some companies. So we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchmaking sessions with them. Some of them had uh, decent uh, job offerings or, or proposals, even startups were there, research institutes were there. So uh, all in all to benefit uh, the label students and uh, I think it was quite useful. It was like a graduation ceremony, but uh, something that means much more. Uh, as part of uh, EAT Raw Materials ecosystem, and as Imre mentioned, this alumni network, which you're also eligible to join right now of having attended this event. Alumni, uh, I also, uh, during the summer, uh, summer of 2019, started participating in some of the alumni activities as participant. I attended a student conference funded by the alumni uh, Lumina Heights flagship event company challenge, which was with Atlantic Copper, a big uh, player in Spain. Uh, and then we had some, some research and uh, communication related activities. Now, after that, I made a lot of friends. I uh, met a lot of new people and got uh, familiar with with this alumni ecosystem. And fortunately, uh, by the end of the year, there were elections uh, for, for the new board and uh, I ended up uh, becoming the president of EIT Alumni Network. Uh, I will just quickly tell you that uh, during, despite the pandemic, despite this uh, horrible year that we have had, uh, what the alumni managed to do over the course of this year uh, and continues to, or, or plans to do much more in the next, hopefully situation will improve. Uh, so that there might be some incentive or, or you might feel a, a bit, um, uh, let's say incentivized to, to join our alumni network. Uh, in 2020, we, we first started off and when um, there was this uh, initially this lockdown, we started off with our virtual coffee breaks where we invited some of uh, 
influential players from raw materials value chain from industry and had some uh, uh, short talks informal kind of talks with them to to hear about their experience uh, to learn how they eventually managed to get to that stage of their career we set up uh, our uh, very successful local representatives initiative uh, where we have now in uh, representatives in almost uh, 25 cities in in europe uh, nothing from um, uh, from from Slovenia so far. It would be nice if someone wants to start. Uh, someone from you wants to start uh, our alumni representation there. Uh, we also launched our community platform. Now this is a platform which brings the whole community together. Uh, you, you, you uh, I will probably show you the link how you can join it. But we share opportunities. We share uh, events. Uh, now all of our events uh, registrations also happen through it. Uh, you can you can meet a lot of people. We we are planning to start this mentoring uh, scheme also using that platform, uh, and uh, it's not just uh, jobs and events. It's much more than than uh, more than that. You can you can make new friends. You can meet a lot of people. So you can stay updated with all of our news. Uh, at the label launch. We, as alumni, also uh, organized workshops for recent graduates, which were focused on uh, uh, networking, on on uh, LinkedIn profile, uh, improving that, uh, successfully doing interviews and uh, bossing them, and then also working on your resumes. So uh, then also uh, at the annual uh, EIT Raw Materials flagship event, we organized an alumni session around storytelling technique to improve uh, the communication in uh, in our domains. Uh, we just ran our data science workshop to uh, to improve some of the coding skills for, for the people who are part of our alumni and who are interested in that. Uh, we realized that uh, stress management is something that uh, could be very beneficial at this stage and in the current circumstances. So we brought this about. Uh, we this was so successful actually that we have to run another session and uh, uh, well yeah the registrations had already taken place. We are bringing a CV clinic which was quite unique because we thought this will be a good time to end the year on that because uh, it's not just another uh, this is how you make your CV. This is more like uh, you 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 listen to a webinar okay but then you have a one on one uh, session of almost 30 minutes or 45 minutes where 15 minutes will be review from professionals or counselors and they review your CV and then they give you feedback for half an hour one-on-one uh, -on -one, you can ask your personal questions and they can uh, guide you about that uh, there might still be some spots available if you join our alumni community platform just in time Re this is just uh, uh, some of the things that uh, we as alumni uh, did this year you can join uh, our alumni community platform using this link and uh, well you will you will have this link I will also share it in the chat um, other than that uh, regarding the label masters, uh, what Imre mentioned, I will also like to end over here that uh, EIT Raw Materials Academy has established this uh, platform call uh, where they have brought in some label ambassadors, some recent graduates from uh, these label masters programs. So if you have any question related to your application, uh, related to some uh, like how this works or what's this course or, or what do I do there? And so these kind of things, if you have any queries, uh, you can also chat to um, to to one of the ambassadors from any program that you might like, uh, I happen to be along with uh, two of my classmates also uh, the label ambassadors for Emerald Masters and uh, on that platform I sometimes write these little uh, blogs. Uh, if you happen to read this uh, Emerald Summer Business School story, I am quite sure that you will uh, kind of fall in love with Emerald Masters. Uh, so uh, you can you can connect with us over there. And uh, I will just like to share my contact details if, uh, if I mean, you have uh, any questions or anything to follow up uh, because connecting matters and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ali. Uh, please stay with us uh, after the next presentation. Uh, we will have question and answer sessions, so please stay with us. Um, Zdaj pa bi prosila uh, in povabila k uh, prezentaciji uh, profesor dr. Sibilo Borojovič-Ošterič z Rodarsko geološko naftne fakultete z Univerze v Zagrebu, da nam predstavi Adrije program pripravništva za študente z področja surovin, 
To je program, ki smo ga razvili v okviru aktivnosti regionalnega centra Adrija. Sibila, prosim za prezentacijo. Hvala puno, Urša. Mogu ja početi deliti svoj ekran? Izvoli. Ok, evo ga še. Vidimo. Hvala lijepa. Evo, ja vas srdečno pozdravljam iz Zagreba. Urša me je predstavila, mi smo partneri u regionalnom centru Adria, sveučilište u Zagrebu, Geološki zavod Slovenije i Zavod za gradbeništvo Slovenije. Tri partnera, mi ovdje smo akademski partner. Dakle, regionalni centar Adria vodi drugu godinu, jedan jako uspješan program koji bi studentima bio interesantan interesantan. Urša, samo jedno pitanje. Da li da nastavim na hrvatskom ili da ipak pričam na engleskom? Što misliš? Ja mislim da bi bilo bolje ako nastaviš na engleskom. Može. So I will switch to English now because the younger generations do have a little bit of a problem understanding Croatian. The program has started with implementation. The original idea started it back in 2018. And with the implementation we started in 2019. The major aim or the idea behind was to develop and implement a structured internship program for EC students, students coming from Southeastern and Eastern Europe, uh, actually for the master study programs, which are associated with raw materials. And these are programs running uh, around mining, geosciences, metallurgy, waste management, and other related fields. Uh, I will talk about this under the questions, which can participate in internship at Adria companies and institutions. And at the same time, we wanted to train the trainers at the companies or institutions which are accepting our students. So the, our target groups were raw materials related students, master students from Adria region, and then companies, universities and institutions coming from the region. Our three specific objectives were to improve professional opportunities for the students of raw material sectors related studies in the Adria region, to enable early cooperation between students and the industry, familiarizing future young professionals with real life challenges, and to establish value connections, valuable connections between educational institutions and the industry, and then later on helping building more market compliant educational programs in the future. Um, we started with the uh, hub um, idea back in 2018, and here we started the drafting of the idea of the internship. So the internship first year, the pilot year was 2019. Uh, a lot of preparational part with the procedures and templates have been conducted in the first half of the year. The call was published and then uh, at the, somewhere at the end of the year, we established a internship web page. And already in the year 2020, this year, we started with an online publication of the open call already in January. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, we shift shortly to virtual internship, which was then running in parallel with the physical one. And then uh, we uh, uh, actually conducted, it's already consumed for this year, for 2020, all the funding available was consumed both, both for companies and for the, for the interims. Um, the plans for 2021, uh, we are running the preparational phases now, and actually the call will be published already very early, um, beginning of the year. We, will, uh, we are currently inviting you all uh, for uh, visibility events. Um, we would like to continue with this program uh, in, uh, in the years to come, in 2022, 2023, 24, as a separate risk project, which would include more countries than currently are included, basically the whole Eastern Europe and Western most part of the Europe. Currently, how we stand in the year 2020, uh, we had um, an, uh, uh, six um, countries included, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, 
Kosovo, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Slovenia, and Serbia, actually eight. And uh, starting with 2021, uh, Italy is also joining the program. So basically in this targeted region, both companies and the students can participate in the program. Uh, the, the next slides are focused to the students only, as I, I understood, most of you are here uh, coming from the uh, University of Ljubljana. So basically the application procedure uh, and all necessary informations are at the web page here. Um, the, after the application is conducted and received, we are starting with evaluation, ranking selection and contracting the contracting uh, the contracting part includes two parties university of zagreb faculty of mining and the student and also we have separate contracts between uh, us as the university of zagreb and the companies so there is no direct uh, contract between the students and the companies but it is through the uh, through us as one of the participating partners in habadria what is important to state is the length of the internship is between one month and three months. And the monthly scholarship or award for the students is 500 euros, no matter the countries where they are coming from. So here, I would like to show you uh, uh, what are the eligibility criteria for the students as they have been set in 2020. Um, they will remain the same or maybe a little bit of changes will be introduced in 2021, nothing relevant. First important element is that the applicant should have a bachelor degree from relevant scientific field. And this is mining, geosciences, metallurgy, waste management or related fields. Related fields means other elements of ecology or maybe agronomy dealing with the um, also uh, uh, um, economy dealing with the raw material sector. And this is claimed in the part of motivation letters where the students are describing their motives to join the other internship, which is actually uh, 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 focusing on the raw materials related studies. So the bachelor degree in relevant scientific field. And then the second part is that the student has to be enrolled at the master study program in the relevant scientific field, exactly the same one. And then the university at which the student uh, will uh, uh, acquire his master degree needs to be within the region, Eastern and Southeastern Europe, actually located in one of these eight plus, plus Italy countries, Adria countries plus Italy. So the student has to come from Adria region. That means all uh, Slovenian students are welcome uh, as long as they can fulfill these two criteria to the program. Within each of these study program, applicant must receive, uh, uh, should have obtained a minimum average grade of 3.5. And then there is an appendix since the, the grade scales are different between the country. You should look at the closer at the Cavacol. And then we need a minimum B2 English language proficiency level as an obligatory part of the program. As all the reports, interim reports, final reports, uh, and the application procedures are running on uh, English. Then uh, we have a ranking criteria, uh, which is actually grade point average. This is maximum 60% of the, of the uh, total ranking. And then the number of years of study within prescribed, uh, prescribed deadlines or otherwise, uh, which is a maximum 150 points, 15% award of or publication. Uh, this is again, maximum 150 points, again, 15% and the letter of motivation, 100 points, 10%. This is not an obligatory element. Awards or publications are not obligatory for application. And then after this, we are uh, uh, applying a compatibility, compatibility criteria for the students who are fulfilling all the necessary requirements and enter the database. So basically the field compatibility with the organization part. So uh, field compatibility and the specific skills and knowledge compatibility, which has to be in line with the organization, uh, with their uh, uh, specific needs, uh, 
for example, some organizations are, are applying, um, are entering our database with the internship, which is related to, uh, for example, geostatistics. And then they would like to have a student which is in specific competencies writing that he has experience in geostatistics. So not to start from the very early beginning. So what is mandatory for the application for the students itself? It's a scan of the student bachelor degree, official confirmation of the student's enrollment at the current active master study program, a scan of the official grade point average, calculation for bachelor study, written co uh, co uh, com commendation that the case that GPAs is lower than required minimum. So if you uh, a student who would like to apply for the uh, for the program has an average uh, grade point below 3.5 or uh, uh, equivalent uh, according to the countries, he can gain a written recommendation from the professor, uh, one professor uh, from his universities uh, in order to let's say overcome these uh, these these difficulties with the grades some students are working parallelly to the uh, to to their studies so the grades uh, the grade point average is sometimes a problem so that's that's what we have here and evidence of the student English or language proficiency B2 level minimum a scan of uh, initial pages of a passport or ID card for you countries so for Slovenia it's sufficient ID card and then a signed motivation letter one pager stating students contact information key skills interests and reasons for applying to the program and again uh, a GDPR element privacy statement which can be downloaded from this link Non-mandatory part of the application documentation is evidence of any possible academic award, rector's award, publication, scientific or professional ones, which is giving you extra 15% uh, of, the, of the points. The host organizations which have been uh, uh, in the program in 2019 and 2020 are listed here. It's a number of, uh, 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 of companies in the raw material sector uh, coming from other regions. Most of the companies are from Bosnia and Herzegovina, from uh, uh, Serbia, and then from Slovenia and Croatia. Uh, students who have been attending uh, the internship are coming from all of the uh, Adria region. In this 2020, we had a little bit of a problems uh, due to the traveling restrictions. So mainly the students from their country were conducted, conducting internship in their country also. I had added also an impressum uh, uh, from um, our, our students interims who conducted the program. And uh, I must say that on behalf of the whole team working with me, we are so very happy to say that a number of students have been permanently employed through this program at the companies. Um, and the overall experience was highly positive. I did not talk a lot about the preparational phases for the students, but as this is a structured internship, basically you can find everything on our web page, including uh, all the, um, well, oh, let's say the, the package, including the webinars, uh, interim reports, templates for the reports, for monitoring uh, uh, student progress, uh, estimation of the student success, the, the supervisor success, etc. And at the end, I would like to call you to uh, to ask you to register, uh, which are open to register uh, for the info day, which is going to be conducted in January 18th, um, where you can find out all the necessary informations for the new call in 2021. So the info day is uh, quite early uh, in 2021, and we are expecting that the registration. Uh, will be open for the companies already the end of January, beginning of uh, February. And after the, uh, the, the uh, gaining the sufficient number of companies, we will open the registration for the students uh, next year. So that would be all from my side. Stop sharing. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm quite open for the questions. Um.
Najljepša hvala si bila za iščrtno informacijo o Adria Internship programu. Kot ste slišali, ga naslednje leto razširjamo še na Italijo v sodelovanju seveda z italijanskimi partnerji, tako da bo program še pestrejši. Zdaj pa predlagam, oziroma imamo nekaj minut na voljo, da se posvetimo vprašanjem na vsem preteklim govorcem. Tako da bi vas lepo prosila, seveda jezik vprašanja lahko prilagodite po svojem okusu, odvisno od na koga je vprašanje naslovljeno. In lahko kar pač se priključite v svoj mikrofon in vprašate. Hvala si bile za deljenje povezave. Vmes je delil povezavo na alumni program tudi Ali, potem na programe magisterskih študijev tudi Imre že predhodno, tako da si pogledajte v četu, tako da bi pa kar vas lepo povabila k besedi. Urša, lahko mogoče se eno vprašanje za prebit let? Seveda, izvoli me ta. It's a question actually for Imre. Thank you very much for your nice and comprehensive presentation. What I was wondering is that these studies that you presented are all in several countries. We are now all stuck in a very strange situation where no traveling is allowed. So I was just wondering how will these courses be organized or how is this, will this situation influence to the courses? And um, I believe that this uh, question might be even interesting for the students. Is there any, uh, will, will the situation have any influence to the tuition fee that is needed for the, the courses? And uh, another question I, I'm uh, interested in is if this tuition fees cover uh, actually just the courses or any other arrangements as well, let's say like student dormitories or, or this is all in the arrangement of the students. So this would be my question. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much for your questions. I think it's, uh, it's a lot of questions and I'm trying to, to answer to, to all of them, but also I think uh, Oli could, could help me in, in, in some details. So, uh, well, COVID is exactly what, yeah, what you mentioned. So it's difficult to travel and in all these lockdowns, but I think it's not only, only for, for these programs, but all of the programs that we have in Europe. And then uh, I also know that uh, mobility is, is is anyway affected in generally uh, uh so so yeah and the program is actually doing their best to 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 mitigate uh i know that during the summer time it was a yeah there was a, a potential window to travel and there's most of the programs actually starting in september so the students could actually start their studies within the location that they wanted to and then the lockdown hit them a, a bit later so the universities then adopted and then some of the courses in some of the countries, of course, uh, online, as in, in many, you know, other programs all over Europe. So I think it's, again, it's not, not, not unique. I also know that they made a lot of efforts uh, uh, already in 2020 for the cohorts that, uh, yeah, well, already enrolled, that uh, have to make the internship possible. So they try to use these windows and then also uh, whatever possible through online postponing activities uh reorganizing and resetting the, the schedule so they programs actually doing a lot of management around it to to make the program still feasible and then as it intended for for the students so yeah it, it's unique in every country and in every 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 program but they they doing their best but i think yeah again it's not unique for for these programs i think we all struggling with all these same challenges uh, all over europe um well um the tuition fees are tuition fees so uh, uh the, the dormitory and, and and other costs uh, i believe is on top of that so that's living costs right so that uh, i mean that they're getting support from the universities how to arrange and organize but i mean 
it had to to organize and arrange by by the students themselves. Ali, please, uh, uh, if I'm if I'm saying something that's not correct, please please come in uh, and tell me. But uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, so yeah, the students need to arrange. Of course, they get some support and help, uh, and then some some vicinities dormitories available at these universities. But then uh, the students are expected to to organize by themselves. Uh, I'm not sure I remember or answered all the questions, uh, if you. Yes, for me, this was all the answers that yeah, okay. I received. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know if any more question may be from student side. Do we have any? So I'm still here, so. And again, uh -huh. maybe you can also also use the chat, chat even privately. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm here. I, I've checked uh, the chat box if every, anything is there. Um, maybe I can continue here and maybe a question for, for uh, Ali, because I know you have to run. Uh, later. Uh, so uh, maybe can you share with us um, some examples, uh, if you know, but I'm sure you know, about how gradu graduate of EIT Raw Materials Academy programs develop their further professional car careers, maybe. Of course, you said uh, yours, you explained yours, but maybe uh, even some different um, uh, professional paths. Yeah, sure. So Perhaps I can, uh, yeah, the ones I closely know, I have some examples, especially starting from my own master's program. I do know that uh, some have taken this uh, entrepreneurial route. There are actually a couple of startups that are doing really well. Uh, Meteor is one of the startups that is supported by the EIT Raw Materials Academy as well. So I have a, uh, a friend who, who is actually taking the lead in that. He's from India. So he graduated, uh, I think, two years now. Uh, then we, we also see a lot of people who develop a passion for some kind of research. Uh, we, so they are, they are placed uh, at some good positions uh, all across Europe and also all across the world. Because uh, what I have also realized, which I didn't know before, to me it was just another master's program in Europe, uh, which uh, had a lot of movement in it. But uh, we, we have realized that this is quite popular and especially at certain places, uh, at certain hubs for uh, mineral resources, for example, in Brisbane or Perth, or, or even it's starting to develop some uh, familiarity in, at, uh, in the UK at Camborne School of Mines. So as more and more graduates are getting in touch with them, uh, the program is getting a lot of popularity. Uh, there are some entrepreneurs also, and uh, there are people who are uh, just my couple of my classmates have already started working with the iron, uh, iron mining companies in Sweden. Uh, so, I mean, it's just recent graduates and uh, somehow the roles are filling up quite quickly. And uh, I just want to mention here that Emerald Consortium is uh, organizing this uh, Minerals in the Loop uh, conference on 14th and 15th December, just to showcase how strong of consortium that we have all across the globe. We will be making, I'm part of the organization committee, so we'll be making 11 virtual stops uh, in Europe, uh, starting with, uh, I mean, Freiburg, and then we have Nancy, we have Lulio, Liege, the program partners, but also Helsinki, and then Brisbane, Perth, Manila in Philippines. Uh, we have uh, New York in the uh, in the US, and we have Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, so, so it's uh, just to showcase how good of a network uh, of professionals around the themes of geometallurgy, mineral resources, characterization, processing, uh, we have built. Uh, I will share also the link for that uh, in the chat. It's free to join, and you will be able, even if you're not available on that day, it will run for 24 hours, and the content will be available until 30 days after the event. Uh, if, if you're a prospective Emerald student, uh, there will be several Emerald alumni who will be presenting there. So there will be pitches from uh, Emerald alumni starting from, let's say, even six years ago, uh, five-minute pitches. So that component is there, science component is there, business, industry, component is there and uh, we are sure that you will like that event. So yeah, I hope I answered your question. 
Thank you very much, Ali. Yes, it's a lot. It's a lot to be told. So uh, and a lot of interesting uh, events. So uh, yes, we will definitely share. Uh, if you provide uh, links, we will share with the uh, today's attendees uh, um, in today's chat, or even later uh, we can uh, send um, some invitations further. Mogoče še vprašanje za Tino pa v slovenščini predstavila si veliko priložnosti pravzaprav iz regionalne inovacijske scheme, ki predstavlja enega od finančnih mehanizmov za podporo inovacijsko manj razvitim državam. Vemo, da zadeva izhaja iz Innovation Scoreboarda. Slovenija se na tem Innovation Scoreboardu premika malo gor, malo dol. Pa me vse en zanima, dokdaj pričakovati, da bo Slovenija še upravičena do teh sredstev. Vemo, da smo ravno na meji, no zdaj smo malo pot, ampak kako se zadeve, če imaš kakšne informacije na to temo. Ja, hvala vrša za vprašanje. Ja, tako. Upravičeni do dodatnih sredstev iz regionalne inovacijske sheme so partneri iz držav, ki so pod inovacijskim povprečjem. Ampak recimo letošnje leto sta se Estonija in Portugalska dvignili nad to povprečje s svojo oceno, a še vedno ostaja ta upravičeni do teh dodatnih ris sredstev, ker velja zapisan pravilnik EIT-ja do nadaljnega. Prihodnje leto se začenja nov program Horizon Europe, ki bo nadalje financiral Kike in s tem tudi RIS schemo, tako da pričakujemo od EIT-ja nov pravilnik recimo temu, ko bodo morda tudi spreminjali države, ki so upravičene, ne vemo, morda bo ta Portugalska in Estonija ostali, Slovenija je še nekoliko pod njima, tako da za prihodnje leto Slovenija še gotovo ostaja upravičena do RIS scheme, Za prihodnje leta moramo pa počakati na nov pravilnik, ki ga bojo verjetno upam pripravili že naslednje leto. Najlišja hvala, Tina, za pojasnilo. Zdaj, če ni nobenega konkretnega vprašanja, bi potem jaz predlagala, da nadaljujemo s programo in sicer takole predstavljamo, Predlagam, da dam besedo ponovno Imre Tugomhotu, da nam predstavi nekaj IT-ro materijalis aktivnosti zanimive za univerze, za profesorje, za raziskovalce na univerzah. Imre to vi predstaviti bo pa sledila predstavitev Sibile, ki nam bo predstavila pa nekaj en konkretni projekt, ki je namenjen vsega, se pravi profesorjem na univerzah, ki so vključene v projekt, pa tudi širše. Imre, I would like to give the word to you again. Yes. Will you share your presentation again? Yes, please. I mean, it's not that long, but yeah, definitely. Go ahead. Yeah, I have to. Go beneath the surface. <laughs> okay, I'm almost there, so just give me a one sec. Also sound, so yeah, yeah, you must must see now my, my presentation. Uh yes, welcome see. welcome everybody again. That that this part of the presentation is more more for the researchers, but also of course, uh, uh, students are also most welcome to, to, to follow, follow through. I mean, not only for researchers and lec lecturers, but all, all professionals, actually, that's uh, 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 working in a field. I mean, that, um, also graduates could be considered in some uh, kind of uh, professionals, right, already. I'm not going to go again into, into uh, the innovation communities because it was just told, yeah, it was told, told yeah. It was mentioned already uh, in, in many times, so how uh, EIT and then the kicks uh, are, are going. So I can just skip this part, and then let 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 me more focus on on some activities that we can actually offer uh, uh, 
to, to the professional community uh, within EIT raw materials uh, and then the mining sector related universities, companies. So first of all, uh, it's not uh, a specific, uh, let's say, project or, or program itself, but a, a portfolio of, of training activities that is available throughout uh, uh, our network, and then it's, uh, it's easy to book uh, within our, our website, actually. So uh, there's there's a link here. I can also put this in 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 the chat box later uh, after after this presentation. But this is actually our website, and then there is an academy uh, section in our website. And if you go for professional learning, you will see these two distinct, uh, 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 let's say, sections. One is e-learning and MOOCs, and then you can you can go there and then look for some some very interesting MOOCs on on different topics. Uh, most of them are free of charge. Of course, MOOCs are are more let's say in informal so it, it comes i mean and many of them are actually providing some some sort of certificate but they are not that kind of um, uh, training that you you get uh, strong certification of course uh but it, it it could be very interesting if you w would like to broaden your 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 knowledge uh, or your or view in some sort of field and then there are live courses uh that are also available. There is many. Uh, actually, you can select more than 60 different courses uh, from from exploration geology, mining, uh, processing in detail. In uh, for example, there is one about only uh, let's say gr grinding processes. Uh, that that's very specific processing topic. Uh, well, metallurgy topics, but also some horizontal like leadership, entrepreneurship. So that there's a lot of different courses available. Many of them actually face to face, so it's, it's physical training uh, had been switched uh, most of them to uh, let's say an, an online version this year, but uh, the intention is to keep them you know as as physical and then through this page actually you can you can you can select which one is best of you because there's a lot of information offer up from yeah all of these courses about then uh, who is the trainer. What is the background? What what are the background of the trainers so that they, you can actually decide they are really uh, professionals and then experts on that field. Um, you can you can check the content itself and then you can actually book book the places. Most of these co courses actually are not free, so uh, these are professional trainings come with some certification, uh, and then they are not free, so that uh, the participation fee varies. Based on uh, uh, on the program itself, but uh, let's say between 500 to 1,500 euros uh, uh, for a participant. But that's that's just a, a, let's say a, an opportunity that you you might check. Um, <clears throat> and then there will be a lot of other uh, uh, activities and programs available uh, within let's say official uh, uh, activities. Tina was mentioning about this with the regional innovation scheme. Uh, that uh, with actually a, a bunch of capacity building programs that we would like to provide throughout uh, all, all the, re the regions we're covering, and then uh, including Slovenia. Uh, and then we have a program called Rich Education and Entrepreneurship, and then we through and then we are cooperating with uh, the regional center Advia together. We are going to provide a lot of activities and programs through through this uh, let's say uh, project. And then let me mention first this University Business Cooperation Capacity Building Program, which builds on this HA Innovate. Uh, if you have not heard about HA Innovate, this is the, the, the basically a screenshot of, of their website. I mean, it's this website, hainnovate.eu. You can reach out for it. And then this is a strategic self-assessment tool that developed by OSCD and the Euro Commission together. So it is then and it's maintained basically OSCD and the European Commission together. And then this is a tool that universities are able to 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 assess their self perception and then distribute it among different stakeholders so that you could have the self uh, self self perception of based on the students' perception based on the uh, external stakeholders based on the professors the management lecturers so so you can you can choose whatever you want stakeholders and then distribute them on how the university is 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 entrepreneur. So there is eight aspects that you can assess uh, and around the third mission of the universities and then how the university cooperating with business in different aspects. And then based on the outcome you get, 
you can actually be, um, plan strategically what would you, your next steps as a university uh, to improve that state uh, or the goal that you have or that you would like to achieve. And then I think it's a very important program because uh, the European Commission is is about to, to, to launch a big capacity building program from European higher education institutions together with EIT and all the kicks. And then doing this assessment is one of the, uh, let's say, the prerequisites to enter that program. And that program comes with a, a, a huge uh, uh, 450 million euros of funding for the next seven years. Uh, and then I think that, that's why we it, it's highly recommend to look for this opportunity to apply this university business capacity following program next year as a university and take part. So it's not individuals, but for universities. But I, I think this is important to mention here. Well, uh, within this program, I mentioned uh, that we are doing and running together with the uh, regional center Abzia, a uh, so-called Romat COP program will be available. And the Romat COP program is basically a professional training program uh, on how to use Earth observation data in your research. And then basically, this is a video. Uh, let me show uh, and give you a glimpse. This is not a long one, but it's a two minutes long video. And then I would like to give you a glimpse what this program is about. And then this program will be also available through through uh, the regional center Adria. So you definitely, if you're interested, you definitely go and check uh, regional center Adria website next year because there will be uh, an application to this. Uh, I hope that you will also hear the video. I mean the sound. I'm not sure. The demand for raw okay. materials is high but every day it gets harder to find new mineral deposits. That's why future exploration must focus on the remaining remote locations to penetrate deeper into the Earth's crust. Earth observation contributes to the sustainable supply of mineral resources with global coverage of the Earth's land surface and openly accessible data, Copernicus, the EU's Earth observation program, provides cost-effective solutions to complex and critical issues around sustainable management of the materials value chain. Some of the main sustainability challenges for the raw materials industry are the costs of exploration. Uh, they have gone up over the last uh, decade or two. Satellite data is one way to deal with that because it's very cost-effective. In the mining sector, it is crucial to have the best possible environmental and security monitoring. And this would not be possible with Earth observation and Copernicus data. Earth observation is a very smart way to look from above and have quality data without a lot of intervention on the ground. We need to strengthen our knowledge of the potential applications of Copernicus and improve the technical capacity within the raw materials community. To meet these challenges, EIT Raw Materials and the European Commission have created the Raw MatCop program. Raw MatCop funds postdoctoral research projects and industrial placements which investigate the use of Copernicus data in concrete raw materials case studies, such as the recovery of critical raw materials from mining residuals and ground stability monitoring in mining sites really smart and intelligent researchers devoting one to two years of their lives into developing these methodologies that can be scaled uh, rapidly, which is exactly what we need. The Raw MatCop program transfers the knowledge generated by the targeted research projects through hands-on training courses, the Raw MatCop Academy. Raw Mat Cop, the Academy, is a great example of capacity building and training so that regular people, researchers, even people like me that work in intergovernmental agencies can use and apply this data in our work. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that gives you a glimpse. So this is really a hands-on train, uh, training from, from experts that actually really experts and, and scientists working on the field and using all these Landsat data and the Copernicus data can be used also not only for you know mining but in environmental issues and, and so on. So the, all this research and then this is this is a very good, a very strong program. I think it's very interesting. And then uh, the, an, another program uh, that we called Adam Peflo uh, that will be also available through to uh, Regional Center Andrea. And then basically, this is a technology transfer uh, uh, program or technology transfer training program, and then it has two distinct lines. So if you are a researcher individually and that you would like to learn how to valorize your research, 
but also in the same time, because uh, there's a strong need that researchers are really, uh, when, when it comes to patenting and, and, and all this stuff, uh, but the researchers are evaluated based on what they published and all these, 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 these metrics that uh, comes, comes important when you are a researcher and you are follow a, a, let's say, a researcher career path. Then all these tips and tricks, how to do it par uh, parallelly and then how to valorize and how to, how to make also some, some profit that actually could, could, could fund your, your next research or, or you can use it whenever you, you want. So that's, that's one line. But also, uh, if you are a professional uh, from one of the research organizations or, or one of the, uh, the universities that has a technology transfer office, so how, for example, an effective technology transfer office can be operated, how th does this office could really help local researchers uh, uh, to valorize their product uh, for the benefit of the researchers and the university and the local ecosystem, then this training is, is for you. So that this, this training actually uh, uh, we run for, for, for since many years now and then it's very popular and it's a very good one so if you're interested on on this technology transfer aspect of research with us that i can recommend this program to you so all these will be uh, available uh, and well it's up to you uh, many of them that uh, are, are free so as i said the MOOCs and then all these programs that that comes through uh, regional center adria are going to be free so I think this this is a very good opportunity for you to to broaden your knowledge and then build up some capacity to address this this very fast paced uh, changing that comes with this fourth industrial uh, revolution. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imre. Uh, we will definitely make sure that uh, this information um, goes to the right people. So um, we'll, we'll be glad, more than glad to, to share this information. Uh, Sibila, can I ask you uh, to continue here? Yes, yes, I will share my screen now and talk a little bit more about the uh, trainees project. Uh, one of the projects which is uh, under the EAT raw materials uh, um, education programs, education agenda. Uh, it's actually a continuation of the pilot program which started uh, implementing at the University of Zagreb in 2018 and 2019. And then after the successful pilot, we upscaled this uh, to the Trainee 2 let's say, the program which is now running for Southeastern Europe. Uh, we have a number of institutions participating and six universities, uh, University of St. Ivan Rilski from Sofia, Dnieper University of Technology, Technical University of Kosice, National Technical University of Athens, AGH University of Krakow and uh, Mishkots University from Hungary are on, this, on the side of the training uh, university, uh, which is receiving training uh, from the uh, more developed partners who are developing the programs. Um, uh, so basically, uh, piloting is implementing on uh, six uh, universities in the in the southeastern Europe, and what we had recognized as the key problems and the objectives uh, within all of our uh, EC region, southeastern Europe. Uh, which are related to generic skills uh, received within the study programs is the following. Uh, our high pedagogical approach, outdated curricula, lacking innovative thinking and entrepreneurial skills, low success and application rate at national and international funding, poor management of the existing resources, and the lack of relevant interactions between academia research industry and basically low level of scientific driven business cases. And with the implementation of the train EC project, we are actually developing four modules which can be added on existing curricula in any of the Southeastern European universities. These modules are teaching methodology, project development and management, innovation and entrepreneurial skills, and science to business. Uh, this is going to be implemented uh, in during the project for the six uh, universities named here. And then 
Uh, for the duration of projects, we will also develop and implement acceleration programs for these six participating universities, which are going to run minimum three years after the project. That way, we will several times increase the impact of the project. So what is the methodology that we are using? Uh, basically, based on the strategic documents, uh, we are identifying facts uh, described, which are describing the current situation, categorizing it into the SWOT analysis, accessing scope of the SWOT analysis with the additional questionnaires related to each of these four packages, finalization of the SWOT, and then based on these tailor-made SWOT analysis for the raw material parts of the universities, we are developing the activities uh, and these major activities are transforming to the major learning outcomes and then to the modules, which are these four modules developed in the one of our working packages. And these modules, so based on this uh, background, strong background analysis, which was the first half of this year, our teaching methodology project uh, development and management, innovation and entrepreneurial and science to business. And this is already open for application uh, as a one week course, which are going to be held and implemented in 2021. Also, these developed modules are a baseline for the acceleration programs to be implemented at these six training universities for the uh, duration of the project, the preparation part, but basically after the project ceased, uh, we will uh, continue with this implementation as the follow-up activities. So uh, what has been drafted for, uh, from the Trainee project in each of these four modules? We were basically recognizing the major, the major university, EC university needs. And these are always the, uh, the, the, the sum, I would say, of the major uh, important elements for, for all of the six universities which participated in this background analysis are here summarized. So the new teaching techniques, the improvement of the soft skills for students, enhancement of the student motivations, practical communication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And based on these uh, uh, elements, we have been drafting the major learning outcomes for each of the modules. And they are named here. I will not go into the details, but they are focused especially on this, which has been recognized as the major needs. And each of these uh, 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 elements have been prepared, major learning outcomes, and then the developed uh, uh, te uh, technical part has been develop uh, developed by uh, five trainers and this, their names, so their affi affiliations are here. This um, is transferred to the teaching methodology course, which is a duration of five days to be held at AGH Krakow in June 2021. And the application is already, registration part is already opened. The teaching methodology module contains 30% of the theoretical knowledge and 70% of the practical knowledge. Uh, then the second was the project development and management module. Again, a number of needs related to specific trainings for the application and national, regional EU grants, building of the consortium, project team, proposal planning, writing, implementation, recruitment, development, management, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are the needs coming from our background analysis in these six uh, universities, and then they have been transferred to the major learning outcomes and then to the individual learning outcomes in each of these modules. So the modules are now in the final phase of the development. We are now at the second industrial review uh, part and will be finalized by the end of the year. Uh, the course is going to be held in Sofia, Bulgaria, also one week, five days. Registration are open, 40 to 60% theoretical to practical knowledge. And these are our trainers uh, which are developing the course and uh, their affiliation institutions. 
uh, the third uh, module, the third course, uh, is again the recognizing the basic university needs uh, from the background analysis, SWOT analysis, and the questionnaire of the six uh, universities. And out of this, we are shifting to the major learning outcomes. And then the, from these, we have developed competencies. So basically, the courses are prepared fully as the uh, uh, implementation modules ready to be implemented in any of the universities uh, at the Southeastern Europe. The course is going to be held in Kosice in Slovakia uh, in September 2021. The trainers theoretical to practical part is listed here. And the, the last one, Science to Business module, uh, is a quite a, a unique one, um, uh, implementing transfer of the scientific research uh, and innovation uh, data and projects into the business cases with the scientific marketing, in canvas methodology, uh, product development, funding schemes, etc. So uh, out of this, the course uh, major learning outcomes has been developed. And this is uh, uh, area is covered by the trainees, uh, trainers coming from the Research uh, and Innovation Center KGGM Kuprum from Poland, Nordic Catalysis and Auto Ventures program. The course is going to be held in Mishkovs in Hungary in November next year, 50% of theoretical and 50% of the practical knowledge. So who are the targeted beneficiaries of our modules and programs? Uh, the teaching methodology modules is focused on uh, English teachers at the university level, if we do have them, or the content teachers of the specific international attractive programs. And mobility active teachers, it, this is the, the beneficiaries coming in the first year who will be developing the follow up uh, acceleration programs after the conduction of our initial one the train the trainers element. And then uh, for development and management, project development and management model, model we are targeting young to medium age researchers, including postdocs and younger teaching staff for the innovation entrepreneurial module, content teachers in raw materials core courses, and um, scientific to business module we are targeting academic idea holders. Uh, basically, uh, this is uh, mostly it from me. Uh, we, I would like to invite you to join us to increase the impact of these modules and to register for our workshops here on the link, which are scheduled for the next year. And I would also like to invite you all to join uh, to a project risk management pilot program, which is also developed under our project. It's going to be piloted uh, on December 10th between 12 and 1430. The registration is also opened. Here is the form and here is the link to the uh, to the uh, risk management pilot program. So thank you very much. And stop sharing. Najlepša hvala Sibila. Res iščrtna predstavitev še ena. Uh, in ja, jaz se bom naslednji teden odeležila predavanje na temo risk managementa. Uh, projektov pravzaprav se uh, z novimi znanji se nam odpirajo nove, še nov, nova znanja oziroma pravzaprav uh, dobimo pogled, um, kaj pravzaprav uh, še ne, ne vemo in česa se moramo še naučiti, da smo pač uh, naslednjiče boljši in uh, z novimi izkušnjami uh, gradimo boljša prihodnost. Uh, najlepša hvala. Uh, Meta bi predala besedo uh, še tebi. Vrša hvala lepa. Uh, zdaj preden bi jaz zaključila tole naše srečanje, kje jaz mislim, da je bilo res zelo poučno in, in, in informativno za nas vse. Vidim pa, da nas v udeleženci že relativno hitro zapuščajo, pa bi se en tiste, ki se še z nami povabila uh, k vprašanjem. Oda prosim, če ima kdo še kakšno vprašanje za naše predavatelje, za naše govorce, um, mislim, da lahko sami vključite svoj mikrofon in vprašate. Um, 
do takrat, ko se pa zberete pogum za vprašanja, bi pa jaz vsem si bilo poprosila za odgovor na eno vprašanje. Sicer, verjetno je to bolj vprašanje v strani univerze, ampak vsem mene zanima. Lahko v slovenščini si bila? Pokušat ču. Lahko tudi v angliščini, da bo lažje. I'm just interesting if you could shortly explain for us what is the main advantage for university for being a partner within the EIT raw material. Thank you for your question. There are a number of advantages for the universities, especially. As the university partner, we have been developing a number of educational projects under the EAT raw materials and participating in some of them. And I would say that a lifelong learning education project where we started, it was our first one, it is Dubrovnik International Mining School, brought us so much benefit, not just from the part of the um, better connection with the neighboring EC universities, and but also promotion of our uh, uh, study programs, promotion of our university, promotion of uh, our work here and recognition uh, among the partners in the EC region. I would just say that um, at the beginning, uh, where we started with the, with the joining the EAT raw materials, we have been um, we, we had a number of uh, bilateral agreements with the neighboring universities, but actually not really the activities beneath these bilateral agreements. They were just, you know, a nice pieces of paper uh, which we published on our web page, but beneath that uh, we didn't really have a content and now this brings a content to all of our agreements and we are looking at them and expanding them expanding the mobilities and the opportunities for our students uh, so the partnership is actually i think the greatest advantage for us uh, not just from the ed educational part but also the connections with the industry and uh, and the research institutions within the region and the recognition of, of what we are what we have been doing but without you know a promotion uh, uh, a strong push from the at before thank you very much uh, thank you very much sibila uh, Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Tina Zuzek. I'm coming from Josef Stefan Institute and we are a partner in IT raw materials now for quite some time. We have been uh, successful last year, I mean this year, in obtaining a regional innovation scheme project. However, my question would be, and I am a researcher, in fact, that also habilitated on the post-graduation school of Josef Stefan. So maybe I missed it at the beginning, but I would be wondering if there are new curriculas to be uh, somehow implemented in the already established programs at different institutions. What does this imply with regards to IT raw materials? So my question is, do we have to write a proposal in, in the way what, that we are proposing some new curricula in some institution or how does this initially work because maybe I missed it at the beginning. Uh, how is this implemented? So do you have to be a partner or this is a very general question I have, but uh, somehow I miss this information today. Thank you. I'm trying, I'm trying to un un uh, answer to your question. So, well, yeah. yes, you, uh, usually the way that if you would like to, to get support to to, 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 to write and implement a new curricula, then uh, it's going through uh, an application. So that's, okay. that's, that's, that's the way. And then we usually have uh, an annual circle of, of applications. And then if you are now the partner, so you have the right actually to lead on applications. Uh, I mean, non-partners have the possibilities also to join to some applications, but not, you know, leading one. But as a partner, uh, you are entitled and then eligible to, to have your own idea and then leading on it and then spread up application. Actually, we don't have the call text yet released for this year. And then, it, uh, well, the major reason is that Europe still don't have the next seven year, uh, let's say, uh, budget decided. And then it does have a lot of uncertainty. So that's, that's uh, let's say, the delay. But uh, it will come soon. 
Okay. Um, another question. I mean, we have been very active in IT raw material schemes. So last year we submitted and were successful in RIS, but we failed in upscaling. Doesn't matter. However, uh, all of these uh, project proposals incorporate a lot of educational part. Even if you write and apply for RIS, or even if you apply uh, for uh, upscaling, so is there a, a combination of combining these two things, which is education on one side and R and D on the other side, within the frame of the same proposal, or you are talking about different type of proposals that will incline only to education and training? Well, um, there are different proposal types for for let's say upscaling and education, yeah. but as you as you, as you rightly said. Our approach is this so-called knowledge triangle integration, which is a very, yeah. let's say, strange term. But it, yeah, I mean, you may heard about, you know, the triple helix approach. So something that we would like to bring together: education, research, and business. So okay. in upscaling projects, uh, you are encouraged to have, you know, students working on the also or in in some way on the research part. Let's say so. That's that's how we bring education into a research project. But the focus is to get a product at the end that you can put on the market. Yeah. On the education programs, in the other hand, it's more like the, uh, the outcome is a new program, maybe with new graduate graduates, with a focus of the potential that they could actually develop their own startups, and then also how the industry could support that. So that that's a, a combination of right all these three three let's say angles. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Če ne, bi jaz mogoče samo na kratko povzela, kaj je bilo v bistvu današnjega srečanja. Predem se dokončno zahvalim tudi vsem našim predavateljem in pa seveda moderatorki. Na meni je bil v bistvu seznanitev z aktivnosti ETA Raw Materials. Jaz mislim, da so predstavitve same po sebi govorile in so bile res zelo, zelo vsebinske in informativne. Skozi predstavitve smo spoznali, kakšen je pomen mineralnih surovin, kakšen je pomen z njihovo oskrbo, kakšen pomen imajo pri oskrbi z mineralnimi surovinami inovacije in pa predvsem v bistvu podarkom na krožnost in pri vsem tem EIT Raw Materials doprinaša in pomaga. Hkrati smo spoznali tudi, kakšna je podpora pri izobraževanju na tem področju, pa ne govorimo samo o ožjem področju mineralnih surovin, ampak tudi v vseh, bom rekla, podpornih oziroma prepletajočih se dejavnostih in pa področjih, ki so pomembna za to, da smo lahko učinkoviti pri tem. Iz osebne izkušnje smo spoznali, Točno to, da mineralne surovine niso izključna domena geologov, rodarjev in metalurgov, kot bi si kdo lahko mislil, ampak nekako prepletajo tudi ekonomske znanosti, elektrotehniške znanosti, strojništvo in vse ostalo. Spoznali ste tudi Adria, RAC Adria program pripravništva in pa številne priložnosti, ki jih ta skupnost nudi univerzam pri svoji, pri vključitvi vanjo. Še enkrat bi se prav lepo zahvalila res vsem predavateljem, Urši za uspešno moderiranje. I would really like to thank again to all of the lecturers of today's meeting for very comprehensive, very educative presentations. In pa seveda prav lepa hvala vsem udeležencem, ki ste ostali z nami in upam, da se hmalo v kakšnem podobnem dogodku spet srečamo in da smo vas dejansko navdušili za sodelovanje tudi z EIT Raw Materials. Torej še enkrat prav lepa hvala vsem in prijesen zimski konec tedne vam želim.